Minnesota sports fans. We know all too well how it feels to sign up for a lifetime of purple pain. Welcome to Before We Die with Jesse and Thor on Purple Daily and Score North. What's going on, everybody? We're back Monday edition of Before We Die on Purple Daily and Score North. As always, I'm Jesse Pierce. He's Thor Nystrom. He's Ross Brendel. We're here bringing you the Vikings news. You love it. You hate it. You consume it. Either way, you're welcome. Uh, You know, guys, preseason. Can we just get a hallelujah? Preseason's over. We can now focus on some real football. How excited are we? I will say I'm not thrilled that the Vikings didn't win a preseason game, although we can always point to the Detroit Lions winning their preseason, not winning regular season game. Doesn't matter, but I still would have liked to win on Saturday, guys. Yeah, or even have an interesting game to watch. The, the last couple <laughs> too. last couple of preseason games were, were sort of a slog to get through, um, but it, it was sort, sort of like the middle of a Ken Burns documentary, like when you're <laughs> in like the seventh hour or whatever. But uh, I mean, yeah, you know, we of course we saw super interesting things and and the Vikings sussed out very important information about their roster through those preseason games. And even though they went 0-3, by the way, one one of the two co-hosts of this show was sort of telling the audience that the Vikings were going to lose their their preseason games. It's also the one who said the Vikings are going to win 12 in the regular season. So maybe there's some predictive value into what that fella says. Mm -hmm. But I I, I don't care about the fact that the Vikings did not win a preseason game. They were not playing their starters mostly. They weren't even playing some of the key backups. So it was a lot of the the guys way down the roster. They figured out a lot of the the lower down roster spots. And we're going to talk about that with cut down day coming up uh, tomorrow. But Um, overall, uh, you know, I think there was promising things that we could see this preseason. Have we already learned from the Viking staff that preseason games with this, with these two Quasi and Kevin O'Connell making most of the decisions that preseason really won't matter and factor much into really anything? Because I think we have, they've pretty much said as much. Thousand percent. Yeah. I mean, they're not trying to win the preseason games. So the fact that they don't win them, Vikings fans should not care about that. Yeah, you know, I would agree. As uh, Thor, you alluded to, cut down day coming tomorrow. Minnesota Vikings, along with the rest of the NFL, have to get their roster down to 53. A few cuts being made today, some still waiting to be confirmed, but we're going to go ahead with the sources on this one. Uh, Let's start with T.Y. McGill. Obviously, 3.5 sacks throughout the preseason. People were excited about what T.Y. was doing. However, an injury to his ankle early on on Saturday, I think, was probably the, the break no, no pun intended, uh, that, that hurt him. I mean, Thor, what were your thoughts on TY surprised at all, uh, disappointed or are you okay with that? Yeah. The, the sprain that broke the camel's back, I guess, <laughs> I guess it would be, right. um, yeah, it, it would be interesting to know the thought process of the coaching staff vis-a-vis TY McGill heading into that game. Mm-hmm. Um, almost everybody is including myself assume that, that maybe TY McGill wasn't a hundred percent lock before that to make the roster but pretty dang close, like maybe 90%. Like you mentioned, the first two preseason games, the guy had three and a half sacks. He was all over the screen. You know, in in a couple of these boring preseason games, you know, that we were just alluding to, he was the guy who was like, oh my gosh, like he he, he was the one guy you could point to when you're watching defense, was getting called out on on, on a lot of different plays. Surprising Mm -hmm. that they moved on from him. Was was that a a result of losing a tiebreaker because he sprains the ankle early in the game? Looks like he's going to be out for a week or two and and then he'll be back. So I I don't know that they had to do any injury settlement stuff there. But was was him not being able to play out that game? Did that allow one of these other guys like Lynch or, or one of those other guys that they're looking at to move above him? Or were they already sort of trending in the direction, you know, sort of against what the media was was supposing there? that Miguel was going to make the roster was the, were the Vikings actually not on that train and and they always had the other guys sort of ahead of T Y McGill that we just don't know. Right. You know, the other interesting cut that I'm finding today is Ty Smith for the second time in as many weeks, the Minnesota Vikings have opted to cut him. They obviously used him as depth in Denver. Uh, why is it just not working for Ty and the Vikings? And why did they even really bother to bring him back? I mean, obviously they must've seen something a little bit to give them that depth and they had that confidence, but um, what are your thoughts there on, on Ty Smith? There's a concept in baseball of a quadruple A player who's stuck between, you know, triple A and then major leagues and the sort of, you know, but we don't have a quadruple A. Yeah. That's sort of like a guy like Ty Smith, you know, and it's, it's like in the off season in baseball, you have a bunch of guys who sign minor league contracts. They come in for camp and then they're, they're sort of competing, whatever, but they're considered sort of roster flotsam. 
And that's sort of what Ty Smith is. You know, he's just sort of a, a camp body. I'm not sure what physical traits that he has where that, you know, a gem could emerge there. Um, I, I think he was, like you mentioned, I think he was just in for depth, um, you know, for camp. But, it, you know, I mean, the Vikings now have gotten an extended look at him. They, they know him quite well. So I, I think if, if they did need someone down the line because of depth issues, whether it's injuries or whatever, that they could potentially call him. Um, but, yeah, I, I, you're not losing much by cutting Ty Smith. Mm -hmm. Another guy that is rumored to be cut wide receiver Myron Mitchell, five catches for 55 yards this preseason was on the practice squad, was an undrafted uh, player. So no real surprise there. And again, we know what the Vikings have at the wide receiver depth uh, surprised any, either of you, Ross or Thor. I wouldn't say surprised, but Myron Mitchell was a victim of circumstance this, right. this off season. In past seasons, the Vikings have not had good wide receiver depth. And so on, on some of the, the past teams, you know, he probably would have made it, especially because he had a pretty solid camp by all indications. He looked decent in the preseason games. But the Vikings now all of a sudden they wake up and they have awesome receiver depth, um, you know, between, you know, Smith. But obviously, Osborne now is just locked in as, as wide receiver three. Seems like he's going to have a good year. And then behind him, you know, be between Smith, Marset, between Naylor, um, even between Tristan Jackson, you know, and stuff like that going down, even Dan Chasina, who they would like to keep on the roster as a special teamer. I don't know if he, he might end up being on the wrong side of the numbers, but Myron Mitchell, he was just caught there where there was, you know, sort of like Elbert Wilson, who, who yeah. got the ax uh, late last week. You were just caught on, on the wrong side of one of the positions the Vikings happen to be super duper deep at. The Vikings are not super duper deep at every position, unfortunately. Wide receiver this year just happens to be one. Myron Mitchell, he could be like, you know, in terms of qualitatively, I, I do think you could make the argument that he could be on a few different rosters around the NFL. <clears throat> cough, cough. I'm looking at you, Chicago Bears. <laughs> like you would think that Myron Mitchell could be their wide receiver six. So maybe maybe he ends up getting picked up. If not, certainly he's going to be on a practice squad. But because of the numbers, it just was not in the cards for him this year. I'm interested to see how receivers three through six or four through six shake out and what that looks like with the loss of BC Johnson, one of the casualties of mm -hmm. that final preseason game in Denver loss right. for the season with a torn ACL, which, Oh, by the way, maybe backs up the theory of not playing players in preseason games that may or may not contribute. I don't know how much BC Johnson was going to contribute in the new offense, but he was more than likely going to, at least a little bit. So when you talk about, was I surprised by the cut or any of the cuts we've seen so far? Mm -hmm. No, but I am intrigued and interested to see where it goes and who sets themselves up as a guy who's going to get in for five, 10 snaps a game, maybe as a fourth wide receiver and play some of those special teams roles as well. And I mean, I think it opens up the door for Jalen Naylor, right? I mean, he's seen limited reps. He's seen, you know, some decent opportunity here in the preseason. I think he's the one that's probably going to benefit from that BC Johnson, unfortunate ACL tear for the second time. Um, you know, we had talked a little bit about Blake Prohl. Do we think he ends up being on that final roster? Or do we think he's another guy that gets cut down? No, I, I, I would doubt it on, on that account. Um, but it, but I do, you know, BC Johnson, his injury, you know, like you said, it is going to help someone. I, I don't think I don't think it's it's pro, but, I, you know, uh, Tristan Jackson would be one primary guy I would toss or Naylor, de de depending on how you want to go with that. I, the other question is the Vikings keep five or six receivers, yeah. right? If, it, if it's just five at this point, it looks like it's going to be either Tristan Jackson or Jalen Naylor. If it's six, it looks like both those guys get up, get in. And with both scenarios, I'm omitting Dan Chasina, who mm -hmm. wide receiver wise, I, I don't know what his, you know, obviously there's not a high ceiling, there, but what he's good at, what they like him for is special teams play. So, so you're going to have to sort of factor that, you know, Tristan Jackson and Jalen Naylor against Chasina's special teams utility. Um, but, but I think those are the guys that are primarily affected. And by the way, speaking of injuries, Jalen Naylor suffered another one in, in yeah. the third preseason game, suffered a concussion. N now, concussions are something, you know, like back in the day, we barely even noted them as, as mm -hmm. injuries. Increasingly more we are. Um, and, and, you know, with, with some concussions, th there's different types of concussions, right? Like some of them you can, you can bounce back after a week or two. Some of them linger on. We'll have to see you know, how, how severe his ends up being, but what was not the best about that or, or what um, you're, you're not as excited about there is Jalen Naylor. He was a guy, we talked about this in a previous episode 
where the reason the Vikings got access to him in the sixth round where he did kind of at a depressed uh, price in, in comparison to Jalen Nail- Naylor's talent level is because of all the injuries that he suffered at Michigan State. And he, mm-hmm. East Lansing, he could not stay on the field. And so even minor injuries with Jalen Naylor are significant in some ways. Yeah. Um, and, and so it was unfortunate to see him go down. Right. I want to talk about some rookies that are making an impact that are very likely. It sounds like Ed Ingram, he's going to slot in on that offensive line at the price of maybe no Jesse Davis, maybe no Wyatt Davis, maybe no Schlotman. I mean, what are your thoughts there? Or do you think any of those guys have a chance? Um, you know, you kind of look at Ole Udo, Chris Reed there. Obviously, you've got Cleveland and Derrissa and uh, everyone's favorite Garrett Bradbury as well. But anybody there that you think maybe is counted out or maybe that has been counted in that shouldn't be? Well, first of all, I love the fact that Ingram uh, appears to be, you know, whether it's, it's you know, laid the stake to that that job. I don't know if it's been announced officially, but he is mm-hmm. he is now right on the doorstep of that announcement being made. So that's great. We, we talked earlier this month about how that would raise the ceiling of the offensive line. And not only that, you know, having Ingram in the starting lineup, not only that, it improved the depth because then you were able to knock Jesse Davis down to the, the second uh, unit where he could back up multiple different spots in a way that Ingram could not, because with Davis, he can swing out to tackle as well. So you get this sort of, you know, I don't Nick Punto of the offensive line where, where he can go, you know, if anyone needs a day off or a playoff or a series off, you know, you, you could just sort of slide, slide Jesse Davis there. Mm-hmm. Just Jesse Davis, of course, he's he going to make the roster either way. I think Reed's going to make the roster either way. I think Slotman's going to make the roster either way. Um, Blake Brandle has had a really good camp. He was a guy that yeah. you wouldn't have thought was going to make the roster heading in when you looked at some of these other names. But when you, when you think about him in comparison to like Ole Udo has not had a good camp. Mm-hmm. Why, why Davis had the, the one solid preseason game, but the rest of his camp has not been as good as, as, as those, you know, 15 snaps in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course last season wasn't very good either. He would appear to be on, on the outside looking in. Um, and, you know, and then you're sort of curious, you know, what are they going to do with Valdarian Lowe, you know, who, who they yeah. use a, a draft pick on. But Brandle seems to be right now tentatively on, on the right side of things, uh, along with the guys I just mentioned. I don't hate Thor, it. Thor, if you want me to hop back in to the screen and hop back into the chat, just bring up Nick Punto's name. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all you have to do. Furious. My day has been ruined. Oh, man. You know, he has that effect, right? I feel like Punto is a very polarizing Twins player that I just, it's it's very funny. He's very polarizing Twins player of the 2000s. And, and an, polarizing. He, but he shouldn't have been polarizing, right? Like no. he, ju- he just was what he was. And for <laughs> what he was, he had a value. It wasn't a high value. It was a value. It was just that Ron Gardenhire thought he was an all star. That was the that's how he became polarizing with the Twins fans because yeah. it's like why is this guy getting 550 plate appearances every year? <laughs> this is ridiculous. But uh, hopefully funny. Jesse Davis doesn't get 550 plate the equivalent of 550 plate. Well, appearances there, this there season. you go. And I had cut Ole Udo last week, so I'm still riding high with that. Like I don't, I'd be very surprised, frankly. I think if he does make it, the one that is interesting to me is Schlotman. We talked about how much we're kind of all very down on Garrett Bradbury, which again I know some people are angry to hear which seems weird to me but do you I mean Schlotman's not great at guard so you kind of have him playing better at center but is he better than Chris Reed right Chris Reed we've seen step in there too I mean Thor what are your thoughts there do you think Schlotman has a chance to push Chris Reed aside and be that guy or you know can both of them push Bradbury to where he may belong if I was if I was a decision maker over the offseason I would have bought I would have spent more money on the insurance policy than they did yeah yeah. Um, they, they ended up sort of, you know, and you only, you only have so many resources to delineate, right? Like you, you go down and sit at the off season table, you know, you have this much cap room, unless we start screwing around with the numbers and you know, you have this much draft equity and then it's mm-hmm. like, okay, now we got these holes. How are we going to start to to use the the resources that we have? I thought that the, the center competition, cause I'm, I'm not even going to say backup center. Cause I, I wanted a legitimate guy to compete with him. Um, I, I, you know, I thought that they shot a little bit low with that, but with where they're sitting right now, I keep the best insurance policies that I can on the roster for that center position. Cause I don't want to be in a situation in the season where if Garrett Bradbury gives up two and a half sacks or three sacks in one game where you can't, you can't sit him on the bench. Like you, you have to have that, that insurance policy there. And I think Schlotman at center is, as good of an insurance policy as, as they got right now. So I keep him devil's advocate. 
can Garrett Bradbury come out the gates September 11 against Green Bay and just shock us all? Like, is that possible? Like, is that even within him to be that player that everybody wanted him to be when they drafted him? And I mean, do you think there's even that ceiling still there or are we just kind of tired, done with it? Or are we just being too pessimistic too? I mean, what option, which door uh, do you think is, is really the one that he could come and emerge from? I would like to reframe that. And, and put it this way. I think as a run blocker in this system, he can be very, very good mm-hmm. beca- because of his, his ability to get out of, you know, out of his stance really quick and his ability to get, you know, we, we talked about this before, um, get to the outside shoulder of interior linemen or get to the second level and pick off linebackers. The zone, the, he, he is a great fit for the zone blocking system in the run game for those reasons. The, the other part of it, I think that's going to go more on the coaches than it is Bradbury. You don't want Bradbury on islands against power rushers point blank period ever. And so the, you know, like this is a schematic thing where you just cannot have that scenario. So he needs to have help. And and if, if that requires the Vikings leaving in an extra blocker, uh, whether that be a running back, whether that be a tight end, you know, Ellison, you know, or like whatever, like if, if, if however they have to do it, you have to give him help against power rushers. Mm-hmm. I think Garrett Bradbury's play could tick up this year by being uh, maybe a little bit better fit for uh, the system in, in terms of the run game. Although the, the Vikings did run zone in the past. So, so maybe, you know, that might be a, a bit, a bit of a stretch, but um, you know, O'Connell's system is, is very, very much in that vein, but he could tick up in pass protection a bit, just by the Vikings trying to mitigate his weaknesses a little bit better maybe than the pass offensive staff did. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Thor, I would say that to me, that's a part of the problem. Jesse's question is, can we expect more from him this year? Yeah, I would say at year four, can you expect him to just dramatically be a stronger player? Can he make all those changes? You know, a lot of his issues from people that know it's smarter than I do, Thor and Jesse, they talk about the core, the core. He's not strong enough in the core. He's great in the run game. He's not strong in the pass game. Well, I don't think you can just dramatically expect that to improve. Can it get incrementally better? Yeah, I do believe it can get incrementally better by being in the weight room and working on technique. But when you talk about having to divulge extra resources, like maybe use a tight end, maybe some guys are doubling to help Bradbury, I don't like that, Thor, and, yeah. and 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 I don't like that we're to this point with this player, and we're thinking about how do we protect a guy we spent a first round draft pick on. Right. At some point, you need to get to the point where you just call it. That was weird. At some point, you need to get to the point where you just call it like it is. He's yeah. a, he he belongs in the NFL. He can be a rotational guy. Perhaps he's a backup. Maybe he's a starter on a bad team. I would be very quick to pull the trigger this year if I feel like internally my backup options are better. But the fact that he is still the probable week one starter, (laughs) there might not be better options. And that, that, that terrifies me and bugs me as a Vikings fan heading into this season, because not being strong at that position could derail what this offense is trying to get done. Well, and I think you summed, I mean, just to sum up what you had mentioned there, Ross, he doesn't do his job. You know, like Thor said, you need other people to help you. As you all know, maybe you don't. I'm a big hockey person, right? That's like the defense doing extra because they don't trust their goaltender back there because that's, you know, they they need to step up and they don't want the puck to get through. That's a problem. Like, I don't want that goalie then. And same thing with the center. I don't want a centerman that you need other people to step in and support. I mean, I think you're right, Thor, in the sense that, like, maybe that does help him excel, which is great. At the end of the day, it's a team sport and everybody should be helping each other and kumbaya, yada, yada. But uh, to me, Garrett Bradbury just doesn't do his job, which, which is the main problem. Again, I know we've all stressed it throughout all preseason because we've had nothing else to talk about. Really. Uh, We could talk about QBs now. I mean, that's the next thing we could talk about if you guys want break that uh, horse's back, but um, (laughs) no, I mean, I think that's just kind of, yeah, where I'm at with Bradbury at this point. I think that's fair. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I still think he can be a passable starter if you mitigate those weaknesses. Because sure. you, and 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 you know, more important, I I do want to acknowledge that there are strengths of his game. Still, he's not just a, it's not a total lost cause. Is it a lost cause of the Vikings aren't getting a Pro Bowl center out of that first round pick? Yeah, that's a lost cause. But could he be a passable starter at center in the NFL? 
yeah, you just have to help him with the one thing he's really bad at. Um, you, you might not like to, but that's that's how you're going to get to keep him on the field against power rushers when you're passing. Yeah. You know? Nope, yeah. that's fair. We had talked about just kick this off at Ingram being a rookie that has shined through preseason, making likely to make, I guess I would say, the roster. Let's talk about Ryan Wright. We were all disappointed when Jordan Berry got cut last week because we weren't going to see the punt off that everybody was excited for. But can we just talk about undrafted rookie Ryan's right? Hell of a punt at the preseason game against the Denver Broncos. Did you a guys know? A couple he of them. A couple of them. I mean, him, I don't want to. I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to say it. We got some kickers, boys. We got some kickers in us. The punt and, and Craig Joseph having a heck of a preseason, too. Is this it? Are we excited or what? I thought you were about to say he's got the right stuff. And since oh. you're not, I'm going to. <laughs> you did it. There you go. I, I'm going to. We didn't get the punt off that we were promised, <sighs> but he won what you know, I mean, he would have won the punt off anyway. He was awesome <laughs> on you know in, in Denver. Maybe it was the altitude. You know, I'm I'm not really sure. Maybe he was just geeked up that he was the, the new starting putter. He yeah. averaged 56.3 on, on a 56.3 net average on his three punts. And I believe he dropped all three inside the 20. It was, it was like something like that. Just a fabulous uh, game. And uh, if you were watching on television, Paul Allen kept, you know, shouting out how big he was. So, the, I mean, the, the Vikings now have this enormous punter. I think he's 6'3", 245, he's, coming yeah, out of Tulane. Yeah, he's a big dude. Big yeah. boy. Yeah, but that's how you hit 79-yard bombs, right? Like, I guess you just swing that big leg. Like, holy cow, I just – I couldn't believe it. Yeah, you know what I was most – like, you know what I was most impressed by, Jesse? We talked about this uh, out at the State Fair. Yeah, Ryan All Wright. Of you that showed up, thank you very much again. I know it was a tough act to follow those senior citizens who were rocking, but we appreciate you guys. We we were both we were after the senior citizens and before the '90s house band. Uh, yes. they, they they sandwiched us right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Which Vikings uh, fans, yeah, they fit right in that demographic. Like, <laughs> fit mm, right in. Know. Yeah, Ryan Wright's holding abilities. I I I mean that's going to be very important. We we mm -hmm. had heard. We've heard from a couple different people that that was something in camp that he struggled with, but obviously the coaching staff must feel good enough about it. And again, preseason game, but that part won't change too much into a regular season game. So he got, he got the holds down. The kicks were good. I guess I was impressed with that, but I'm going to live in fear of that all year long that he's going to botch a snap at the wrong time. I, I got something to say about that. There's no law that you have to put the punter in as the holder. You know, I mean, like back yeah. in the day, they, they used to do like the backup quarterbacks more and, and stuff like that. Like if if Wright isn't isn't, you know, good at that or that's not like his thing, the Vikings need to start, you know, figuring, you know, getting other guys work at that and then, you know, yeah. have them be the, the holder or whatever. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too worried about that just because I would pivot off of that if, if that's what the issue is. If this kid can kick like we saw him kick in, in Denver, if he kicks like that for the this season, the Vikings are going to have an above average punter mm -hmm. from year one of, of his career. Yeah. Do you pick somebody else up on the waiver wire just in case you do need, you know, anybody behind Ryan, right? I mean, is that even a, no. an option? I mean, right. You don't no, need not, to, not right? For, not for holding. I mean, yeah. like you're, you're backup quarterback. Heck I, I'm available Vikings. If, if you, you need a, a, a holder. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, at least I could do that, but I mean, like, you know, whether it's a back of quarterback or, I mean, you don't typically see other positions. I don't see any other, any reason why you couldn't have a, a player of a different position doing the holding um, either, but you know, you don't see other NFL teams doing that. But anyway, I, I, I would just have one of the back of quarterbacks do that. If he's not comfortable with it. For I'm the record, available. for the record, Madden still auto defaults to the back of quarterback being the holder. And that frustrates <laughs> me. So I have to, <laughs> Make that change every time. It's and, also and do, better for fake for fakes if you have the the backup quarterback. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Did, didn't to your point on holding? Didn't Adam Thielen hold once or twice during the game? Yeah, I, be, yeah. I believe he Let's did. Let's get Thielen back in there. Thielen's great. Yeah. Why not? He's right? not gonna. He's not gonna drop a snap. Is, is he from <laughs> Minnesota? By the way. I've heard he, rumors he that he's from Minnesota. I have heard that. I can't confirm nor deny, but I've heard. Anybody know where he forward. went to college? I, no, I don't no know. No idea. No nobody know. does it's probably not important though yeah, like i certainly does. wouldn't talk about it ever in my career uh <laughs> to kind of round things out again this is before we die on purple daily and score north talking vikings football two times a week mondays and thursdays today's monday episode rumors are a flying about alexander matson now i want to pull the receipts 
from like week one of before we die when I had suggested, I didn't say it needed to happen, but I had suggested, you know, is there a possibility that Alexander Madison gets moved? Contract extensions conversations have not been going well. He'd be able to walk away in March. The Vikings should get something for a very strong back like Mets. And I've never said he's bad, but if your situation's not looking good, again, going back to hockey, Kevin Fiala, trade him for something. Don't just let him walk away. And Matson's in that situation. The rumor mill source is saying by multiple people that 12 teams have called the Vikings on Matson. Um, guys, is it getting more and more realistic that the Vikings do make a trade for him sooner rather than later? Or do you think it's something they ride out for a little bit longer? Because they do have time. There's no real urgency necessarily to that. I think, you know, the, the reports are saying that, you know, they, it, it was really interesting how specific they were on the number of teams. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like usually when you call the source, like, what is he ticking off the teams for, for Thomas in or whatever? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how they arrived at that 12 number yeah. uh, or, or uh, d- testing the veracity of that 12 number. But it, th- there have been multiple people today outside of Thomas and multiple people outside of that that have also reported the same thing that the Vikings have gotten calls on Madison and in the reports that there's a similar vein to all of them that the Vikings will listen, but they're not just basically you have to meet what the Vikings think he's worth or they're not going to trade him. Mm-hmm. The interesting question becomes, what is that ostensibly draft pick price? You know, what, what is that cost in 2023 pick where they right. would say, yes, um, it's probably, probably between two rounds of it's just which two rounds is, right. is it round four or round five? Or is it round five, round six? See, and I, I think they want three or four, which for a free agent, that's a high price, right? For somebody that, I mean, what team's going to make that move? So that's- I, I don't, I, I, well, I would be, you could knock me on my chair if they got a three, but a four wouldn't be as stunning. I think a five would be more realistic, but it's just like, are the Vikings going to draw the line in the sand at, if we don't get the four, we're walking? Or, or where is that line in the sand? The, the other the other thing I'll point out is it's not a a sunk cost totally to to just keep him for mm-hmm. two reasons. Number one, you get him on the roster this season and he's still a, a good back. He's one of the NFL's better backup running backs, in my opinion. He can do multiple different things. But number two, once he walks and he is going to walk, mm-hmm. Alexander Madison will not be on the team next year. I can guarantee you that. I mean, that, that was a part of the reason they, they drafted the, the uh, Ty Chandler. Because you know, then your your backfield depth is is fine going forward. Um, so so you know, if he if he plays out this season on the team and then walks, the Vikings probably are going to get a compensatory pick in twenty twenty four. That all depends on the signing bonus that Madison gets from from the team that he ends up signing with. There's a formula to it, and there's you know the the NFL gives out like twenty five or 30, 30 of these like extra picks every year. They're sort of like Mardi Gras beads. And, and the, the whole formula has to do with the, the, the signing bonuses of your top, the top guys that you signed, you know, and then the guys that you lost, et cetera. But there would be a really solid shot that the Vikings would get a comp pick for Madison. Now, maybe that would only be a six round pick in 2024. So this goes back to that sort of three dimensional chess thing that we're talking about. On the one side, you have Alexander Madison in 2023, you get him on your roster. Uh, plus you get maybe a, a six round pick in 2024 that's behind door number one mm-hmm. or you can go behind door number two and let's say it's a fifth round pick now which you know th- this coming year in 2023 the draft before that would you take that or would it need to be the fourth for you to feel like you're getting a better deal behind door number two that I'm not sure of but but what I just laid out that is the exact conversations happening right now in Quasi's office yeah, uh, and it's a valid conversation. I think, you know, again, Thor, not to just repeat what you said, but he is. Madison is a very good back. He stepped in when Dalvin Cook was out for those four games, 16 games last year, those four starts. Uh, Wall Cook was down 134 carries on 494 yards, or 491 yards, excuse me, three touchdowns, 32 catches for 228 um, and one touchdown. I mean, He's good. He's not bad. And and I mean, I think it is. You're right. It's very promising that Ty Chandler has really impressed. I mean, I think there's reason to be excited about having Ty Chandler as part of the running back future for the Minnesota Vikings. So I'm interested to see what happens with uh, Mr. Alexander Madison. Um, my I'm just going to kick it in right here because before I forget it, 
My before we die, Alexander Madison will be traded this season from the Minnesota Vikings. That's wow. my before we die. I just have the, it's just something. And for the record, I'm pretty good at predicting trades. Uh, Judd and Phil and Declan can tell you that from last season. I have a thing. It's a thing. Well, okay. let, let me go first and I'll let Thor finish it off. Before we die, Kellen Mond will start a regular season game for somebody and oh. win it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, what? Kellen Mond will start a regular season game for somebody and yeah. win it. Are you now? Are, now maybe he starts. Yeah, that's 10. very vague, Ross. Yeah. I'm almost, is it too vague, guys? What we need to go to the judges for this. Is well, this yeah, too are, vague? Are, are we talking XFL or USFL? <laughs> I can see that. NFL. NFL. Oh boy. I, the, I don't know, know about that one. Give him a couple of years. He holds on as a backup. Somebody's leg falls off and he has to start 10 games and he wins <laughs> one of them. Kellen Mond will win a game as an NFL starting quarterback. Kellen Mond's going to be on my Tecmo, Tecmo Bowl team, and that's how he's going to win his game is what's going to happen. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, yeah. Oh, is it my turn for my before? Uh, yeah, yeah. So last time I talked a little about, bit about Jerry Kill and how Jerry Kill is, is still very perturbed about Tracy Clays and that whole situation about Tracy Clays being fired. The line – so so now on Thursday, we're, we're sitting here on Monday – on Thursday, New Mexico State, now led by Jerry Kill, is going to be playing in Minneapolis against the Gophers. Before we die, I want P.J. Fleck to run up the score on Jerry Kill and to teach him a lesson. <laughs> the, the line of this game is like the Gophers minus like 34 or something. I want a 40-plus point win. And then we can see if Jerry, you know, he, he's been sort of publicly musing for the last couple of weeks. Will, will I shake PJ's hand after the game? Won't I? You know, yeah. like he's going to keep everybody guessing. I think Peach should should add some more intrigue to it. Peach. Peach. But- I was going to say, just call him Peach. <laughs> but, all right. Call him hanging out by, with him for dinner tonight. By dropping 70 points on kill in New Mexico <laughs> State in the open. Start the season off right. I don't hate it just because, you know, yeah, Jerry Kill does deserve to, uh, to get put in his place. Very well said. I wouldn't. wouldn't and he's agree. not coaching a very good team. There, no. I, I watched him on uh, Saturday night when I was, I had two screens going out with the Vikings. Again. They, they did not look so good. They did not. <laughs> they, they lost at home to Nevada by double digits. It was Peach. Man. No. <laughs> I, yeah. Thor and PJ besties. Yeah. I thought I it was like interesting. It. I thought it was interesting that every time I text Thor or hang up the phone with him, he always says, thanks Ross. You bet. Row the boat. Sky. You might go gophers. <laughs> You know what's funny is you I have to say it like that, room. even like, in the text. Like you have to say that, it's wrong, like the, <laughs> no breath, no breath in between, no break. It's the only way to say it. Only way, it. way to do it. Only way uh, to do it. Not to Before turn we it die, in, north. <laughs> Not to turn it into um, Gophers talk, but the well, the I've, best one. But you the are best, yeah. like, the best ones you ever get out of him is when the team loses. True. Yeah, you bet. Row the boat, guy. You might go Gophers. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, that's like it's like uh, on on Twitter when you see the video of like the 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 woman's crying but she's doing the dance anyway. Is, yeah. <laughs> you know you know what I'm talking about like the the sad dance. You know like that's Peach after like a loss for sure. I, I like Peach after after the wins when he's feeling himself. I like when he shoots the strays. Like he shot strays at Scott Frost last year after they beat Nebraska. And that that's I like Peach when he's feeling himself. We're, um, we're Jerry never Kill's gonna... not gonna like that Peach. We're never going to get this thing back on track, Jesse. It's never if he's if he keeps calling him Peej, I think it's time we get out of here. I mean, that sounds about right. We've we've hit our quota of the Peej references, probably at least for at least for today. There's still Thursday. We got time to talk about it on Thursday since that is the yep. game. Why not? We'll kick it off there. Uh, but again, this is before we die on Purple Daily and Score North two times a week, Mondays, Thursdays. We love it talking all things Vikings. Uh, love to hear your feedback, uh, engagement. Let us know how we're doing. This is. New to all of us you know we're, we're working on it we're trying it out it's a good time uh bear with us as we get things ironed out but i think it's we're crushing it and again thank you to the five people mostly thank you to the gentleman that showed us his vikings tattoo yet didn't have <laughs> faith that he was going and by the vikings tattoo i mean he walked up to us without a word and just lifted his shirt which could have gone a number of different ways let me mind you this could have gone a number of ways but it went the best way it could and it was a bold vikings tattoo right on his stomach at the minnesota state fair if Proud you of if you show us a vikings tattoo on your abdomen yes. and then you don't even have belief that they're going to make the yes, playoffs right 
I I question that man's Vikings fandom. I really I, do. It feels like a lost bet to me. I mean, it just feels <laughs> like a bet was lost in fantasy football somewhere along the lines to probably a Packers fan. Maybe he really is a Packers fan. No, he was honest. We asked him, we said, do you think they make the playoffs? And he said, no. And that He's was wrong. it. I mean, that was that was the conversation. It was epic. It was a great time at the State Fair. Uh, again, that was the only time, unfortunately, that Score North will be out there this year. But uh, you can find us on YouTube and all of your podcast streaming apps until then. So be sure to check them out. Check out all of our friends, Randy's Rants, Dex, Judd, Phil, the whole crew. And then obviously, here before we die. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you Thursday. Skull.